we're doing we're doing good now. Let, let's like here. Let's like uh, like just like in Hollywood, action. <laughs> hey folks, welcome to the Your Photography Mentor podcast. This is a live Hello. recording. Like we we even have to have the audience like laugh and all sorts of stuff. Um, in you know in real time. So uh, <laughs> yeah, something something like that. Um, but uh, yeah, for some reason. Super, super interesting, super weird. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna get rolling. Hey, what are we? What are we gonna give away today, Rich? Well, we haven't talked about it at all. And when I say zero, I mean zero amount. Um, well, we always give away stuff, so we gotta give away something. We always give away stuff. How about? How my about, mind is uh, my mind's rearing right now. Yeah, like, what yeah, should we so, give away? Well, so so maybe we could keep it on topic. So today we are talking about um, when and why you should shoot for free if you're trying to build mm. a business, you know, cause mm. obviously if you're just shooting for yourself, you're obviously going to be shooting the landscape for free. You're not going to charge that mountain or that, um, that bird any money. Right. So when and when and why you should shoot for free and kind of, I think we're going to start dipping into a little bit of how you should book, you know, some of your first photography gigs, you know? And so with that in mind, that's a really exciting topic. I know a lot of you guys are going to love that. Um, with that in mind, um, you know, it may be uh, it may be a good idea to give away a reflector today. What do you think? Because because you can use the reflector to get amazing lighting on know? that first shoot. Yeah, that's a great that's a great thing that most people do not use on those free on those free shoots. You can reflect on how awesome you know that would be. How like you that. can reflect on how awesome we are for giving a giveaway. Do that's a right. giveaway. And may, you know what? Maybe we can do today since reflectors are not as expensive as a hard drive, and sometimes we give away a hard drive. Maybe we'll give away two. Two sets of reflectors, you know. Two hundred so, sets of reflectors, awesome. Two hundred sets of reflectors. So we'll pick a, we'll pick two winners today, just because. Um, sorry for throwing that curveball at the team, but we'll pick two winners today, and give away two. Sound good? That sounds good to me, team. Team, team, awesome. Team David Monar. Team, team, awesome. Okay, sweet. I'm just adjusting adjusting my stuff a little teeny bit here. This uh, I mean, this webcam is not as good as my other one. But uh, so then, so what we'll do is, if you want to win the reflector, then all you have to do is just Let's share this this uh, technically challenged podcast video this morning um, via Facebook, and then we will uh, we'll randomly draw a couple of those winners. Reorganizing my desk right here, and we'll we'll mail you a reflector straight to your house. How about that? How about that? That sounds great. From B and H Photo, the best camera store in the world. In the world. Yep, I hear you. I, hear I you. can show you. What? Sorry, Disney. <laughs> I have daughters. Hey, I have a daughter. Disney. Disney um, uh, do you know why Peter Pan is so tired? Why he's so exhausted? No idea. It's because he never lands. Ah, good. I was like, I was trying to think of like peanut butter. I was like. And neither do my dad jokes. They never land. But Ooh, anyways. Nice. Uh, that was better. That was better than the joke. All right. Yeah, well, you know, I get sometimes my jokes fly. Sometimes they soar. And sometimes they don't have enough pixie dust to take off. So that's all there right. There you go. That's all right. Well, um, Richard Coleman. Little that's me. Rich. Little Richard. <laughs> <laughs> little Richard. Uh, okay, so today we're going to talk about when and why you should book some free photography gigs, right? Let's, Which is super important. Yeah, yeah there, it's like, it can be scary and overwhelming and it's really easily to get put into a bucket of bad. Does that make sense? Like when you start shooting for free, it's one of those things that we'll talk about in a second, like where you need to do it, but then it's really easy to like devalue yourself because, oh, just book David Monar, he's free. Um, and I mean, David, to be, if to speak on a severe insecurity Not of mine, free. yeah, we, David's free. Um, I mean, that's the only reason David Monar has ever hired me for a shoot is because he's like, oh, Richard, do it for free. Like that's just oh, they, him and Tammy just sit on their high horse and like, oh, Richard, shoot my my family for free. I hate this guy. Hey, we offered to pay. I'm just kidding. Uh, I would never let you do that. I would never ever let you do that. Rich took some of my favorite family photos, by the way. Here's, you know, it's like on my phone screen right there. You know? We need to do it again in a couple of weeks here, little buddy. That's right. You're going to come visit me in Florida. Florida. It's going to be awesome. But what were you saying? Free shoots? Well, no, that was just my joke. That was like my long build up for a joke just for it to kind of fall flat. 
Never kind of landed. like your dad jokes. Never landed. Never landed. Um, Sorry, folks. Yeah, well, you know, um, you know, shooting for free is a controversial topic. And if you're not careful, like Rich was saying, you can get pigeonholed in, oh, they're the free photographer or people wouldn't value. If word starts getting out that you shoot for free and that becomes like the prevalent you know, f- way that people are talking about you. And, and, and also, honestly, the same could go for just shooting for super cheap as well. Like, oh, you should hire Rich because he's super cheap, you know, or oh, you should hire David because he's super cheap or, you know, Sam Smith or whoever. Then that's not a good thing either. So what's really important here as you're, you know, building your business, we can kind of recap on some of the things we've talked about in the last few weeks of podcasts about you know starting a starting a business starting to make some side hustle income Um, but what's really important to think about is how people are going to perceive you and how people are going to um how people are uh going to be talking about you what words are they going to be using to describe you what are the ways that people are um thinking about you are you are they thinking about you as a valuable artist who is well worth their pay or you know well worth whatever you charge or are they thinking about you in a way like oh how can we get this person this photographer or this photographer uh to shoot for as cheap or as free or as often do you have a tuesday discount (laughs) right tuesday discount yeah so it's, it's really important to understand what are the long-term ramifications of shooting for free are. Understanding the consequences is really important, really of any action that you take. But specifically, if shooting for super cheap or super for free. Uh, super free. I don't know if free can get super, any super, freer. Super, for, super, super for free. free. Super free. Um, but yeah, understanding those consequences are really important. And so to paint a picture, if you get pigeonholed or stuck as the photographer who shoots for free, it's gonna, it could be hard to get out of that. You know, it could be hard to gain the respect again of people or not again, but gain the respect of people who are looking for a photographer. If you are super cheap and you and the word gets out that you are a super cheap photographer. Now we're talking about down the line. I realize that everyone needs to start off somewhere and that's what we're going to be talking about for a lot of this podcast episode. But if you get pigeonholed as the super cheap photographer, there's a couple things that can happen. Number one, people won't ever want to pay you more. Um, And number two, people won't take you seriously. And number three, people who actually have good money, people who actually have more money and are willing to spend more money, won't even consider you because you are the cheapest or you are super cheap. They won't take you seriously, right? Like if if there's a wedding photographer out there charging two or $300 to shoot a wedding, I would like be like, whoa, red flags, (laughs) like red flags, you know? Um, right? Would you think the same way? Because I would just think, oh, that person oh, has yeah. no idea what they're doing. It's they're like, going to be horrible. Like, it, they're going like, to ruin your take, picture. Take the, take the thought. Take the thought. Like it's budget. Like the word budget is a bad thing sometimes. If you brand yourself as budget photographer, that's like buying budget tires for your car. Hmm. Um, if you have a brand new car, you don't want to put a budget tire that's only going to last a few thousand miles. You like want like a good tire that you can throw in your car that you like never have to think about again. And most people that have a new car can afford that good name brand tire. Uh, but if you get stuck with this budget mindset, like that's when you think of problems. Like when something's too good to be true, it usually is. And that's how people think. Like when you're about to buy something and the psychology behind your decision, you're like, ooh. Should I hire like how come this plumber's only a hundred bucks for this job and this plumber's a thousand? Like you start to think like what's wrong with this guy? And you don't want to be the what's wrong with that guy guy. Ooh. You know what? That's a that is a wonderful, fantastic point. I'm really glad you brought that up. If you charge super cheap, then the way that people perceive you is if you're the $100 plumber versus the $1,000 plumber for a big, serious 10-hour plumbing job, because most plumbers are 100-ish an hour or whatever it is, yet you're charging 10 bucks an hour for the same job, the entire time I would be wondering, why is this guy so cheap? 
what is he going to be cheating me on? What corners is he going to cut? Even if he was half the price, I will be micromanaging the crap out of that plumber to make sure that he doesn't screw us over and ruin my house. Yep. Okay. So if you charge super cheap for a longer duration of time, beyond that initial phase that we're going to be talking about in a minute, um, of building your portfolio and starting off your business, if you have the reputation of an established photographer who is cheap, that is bad because people, you know, the good clients won't even consider you. And also the people that do hire you are always going to be looking over your shoulder, micromanage you, micromanaging you, judging you, and wondering why you are so cheap. And it'll be awful. It'll be just be, it's an awful existence. Trust yeah. me. So I really just wanted you guys to kind of like understand the, you know, kind of what's at stake long term for being a cheap or free photographer, right? But Rich, I, I thought it'd be fun to kind of go back and talk about some of our first gigs, you know? Um, so what, what do you think? Like, what, what were some well, of here's your the first thing. gigs? To, to, st- to stick with the analogy, like let's say I'm like a naturally gifted plumber. Like I, I've never was professionally trained to do it, but man, every time my sink breaks, I can fix it. Um, I'm not just going to hop out and say I'm going to charge you what the most expensive guy in town is going to charge you. I'm going to say like, hey, dad, let me – let, you know, you need a new sink plumbing. Let me try to help you out. Oh, my best friend needs his plumbing fix. I'll, I would love to help you out and do it. And then like you build the reputation as you build your skill and as you build your name. So that was just a way blown out proportion. But me personally, when I got started out, I needed to figure out number one, if I love taking pictures of flowers, I need to find somebody else who's yeah yeah who's I need to find out somebody who's taking pictures of flowers and making money. Like I need to emulate something that is working because in sorry, but in 2020, um, there's no new money that I can see coming up. Um, you have to figure out what works and make it work for you. Um, it's almost like a manipulation, which is like I'm like Rich Coleman, the manipulator. Like I love to make things work for me. Um, that's why David calls me MacGyver. Like if I have duct tape and a safety pin I can make that flash fire even though it's not supposed to um so when I first started out I just kind of looked around I'm like when I think of the word photography and success who do I think of and I thought of like four names and I said okay and on a piece of paper I wrote down what do they do okay they shoot families on the beach oh that's not super exciting but I'll try that so that's what I did I went out and shot some families yes (laughs) unless it's Do it six times a week, David, and then you will hate it and it will suck the life out of you. Just, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, so I started doing shoots like that. Um, I started doing shoots for free for friends and family. Um, just so I could build a portfolio, it's really hard to say that you are something without having proof. You can't call yourself a photographer if you don't have a gallery. If When I go to somebody's website, number one, not to harp on last week, a website – is a sales page. That website's purpose is for you to put your best foot forward. So if you're a photographer and you have bad photography on your website, I immediately go red flag. Like if this person says they're a photographer, like, okay, let's say they crochet too. Are they that bad at crochet also? Like you need to be good at what you're doing so that the representation of what you're doing looks good. You can't just put junk on a website. Like that just makes no sense to me because it's a public face of who you are as a business. So Mm -hmm. if we break everything down for today, this is about business. Yep. What's on that website should equal you making money Mm. or equal what you're about. Let's say you're a mom photographer who just is like trying to sell like how to educate your children. Like it's, there's not even money or commerce being taken back and forth. Like that blog, that mom blog should look really good because yeah, that's David Molnar mommy.com or whatever it is. I don't know that don't, 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 don't Google search that please. Uh, but that's just a really public face of sales. And I feel like that's something that photographers just throw stuff up and like, it just withers and dies and looks awful. I think this is a really good point. So 
One of the things we had talked about in the previous weeks about like what you should put on your website, because we, we did talk a little bit about that um, in recent episodes. You should only show your best photos, right? And you should only show what you want to sell more of. Okay, and sell is sell is kind of a relevant term. Maybe you don't want to sell anything. Maybe you just want to, um, maybe you're selling likes on Facebook or maybe you know Instagram or you know or something like that. And sometimes, so sometimes people can applaud you with their comments on Instagram or Facebook or wherever your social media you know is. Uh, they can applaud you with those. You know, they can applaud you with buying your prints. They can applaud you with hiring you. The point is, is that you want to build a portfolio of your best images, and some of those best images you may not have even shot yet, so that's kind of one of the things we're gonna be talking about in a minute. But you wanna be building a portfolio of your best images, and the images should reflect the type of photography you specialize in or aspire to specialize in, all right? And so what I mean by that is, um, is you should only show the things that you really like the, the types of photos that you want to book more shoots of, you know? Because if you show, um, I, I don't know, uh, a live soccer game that you shot of your kids on your website, but you hate shooting sports, you know, even though that's cool. And so many people do love yeah. it, right? <laughs> it is fun. Um, if, if you show, uh, you know, photos of your kid pay, playing soccer on your site, your site, and that's like your portfolio, but what you really want to be shooting is weddings, well, that's not going to necessarily help you book more weddings. Amen? Yeah. You, I mean, you almost said on accident, make it your site, not your shite. Like, you know what I mean? Make your, <laughs> your site shite. look good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't have a... <laughs> yeah. Make it a website, have a, have not a, good, a web shite. Have a shooty site, not a... Yeah. There you go. <laughs> a good sight, uh, not a good shite. Yeah. Sorry, I could I heard you say it and I, I couldn't help but give it my Rich Coleman two cents. That's okay. So if you should only show what you want to sell and not have a shite, you want to have a sight, um, then how can you go about getting those amazing photos on your site if you don't have them yet or if you don't have enough of them yet? Because here's a big mistake I see. I'm going to ask you this question again in a second. A big mistake I see with a lot of new photographers is they just put up a ton of photos. And maybe they're even on topic. Maybe they are of your specialization. But 50% of the photos suck. Should you put those photos on that site if they suck? Why no. Not? Why not? Because... It's like kind of like the process of culling, which we talked about when we were shooting, when we shot you how to see, shoot, and edit like a photographer. You want to weed out, you want to you want to only focus on the positive and not the negative. But if you have a semi soft, blurry picture, it's not good enough. You should never deliver that to a client. It should never be public facing. Mm -hmm. um, and the only thing you're gonna do is you're like, well, it's okay, and it was a good moment you're going to put it on your website and then go back and look at it in a year and be mad that you put it up because of what that mm -hmm. ripple effect for your reputation does. Like everything you do in business has a consequence and a, and an action reaction. It's like throwing a pebble in a, in a, in a, a still pond. Like you throw that website up and the ripples keep growing and it has effect later. So when you build a website and you're showing your work, make sure it's good work not bad work because let's say you're interviewing for a job that has nothing to do with photography and somebody looks at your photography website and sees that it's like a crappy photography website. They're going to be like, wow, this person is putting themselves out there as a photographer and isn't. Does that mean they can be my accountant? Like, are they also saying they can be my accountant and can't do that too? Like that it's very important. And like people will call you critical and mean you're not, it's just, you know, if you're going to call yourself a photographer and even take the next step of having a website as a photographer, like you need to start focusing in on that skill level that we talked about a couple of weeks ago so that your pictures come out the way your mind wants to see them. Yeah, I think it's great. So one of our live viewers right now, Maureen uh, Kelly Stadnick, asked the question, how does one know if they suck, I think is the question. Um, your, you know, your photos, because we're talking about like don't put up those photos that suck. Here's the gut check test that I want you to put yourself through. 
Are you freaking in love with the photo? Does it give you that feeling like, wow, I am so proud of this image? That's your gut check test, okay? And you know, to be honest with you, there were images that I shot 10 years ago that would not pass my gut check test now, but 10 years ago they did. And that's okay because you progress over time, hopefully as a photographer and as an artist and as a business owner, entrepreneur, okay? But what, what I mean by that is if you shot a wedding and you're gonna show all these extra angles of this wedding, the, the B shots, like the shots that you weren't in love with and you're putting those in your portfolio because you're trying to show how you shoot weddings, that's an example of some of the photos that I say that suck. And suck might be a really harsh way to describe it. Maybe they don't, maybe they're just okay, but that's the point. If they're not flipping amazing, do not put it on your website portfolio or any portfolio. Okay, if it's not flipping amazing and you don't flipping love it, do not feature it. Yep, you don't want to be That's just your an okay test. photographer. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you don't, you don't, you don't, like. Do you want just the okay plumber? Do you want just the okay heart surgeon? Do you want just the okay? Doctor, no, you want somebody who's good at what they do working on you. And that's when people are paying you for a service. Sorry, folks, you're professional. Like if they're paying you for pictures at that point, you're their heart surgeon for photography. Like it's specialized enough for them to give you money in return for photos. That's huge. And if, if, if you take that lightly, I'm, I apologize, but it is a big deal. Yeah. Number one, because it's awesome. And like, what an honor for them to pay you to remember something. Mm -hmm. yep. So do it well. And just like David said, like you want to be more than just okay. Yep. And, and so uh, Lisa Broyles, who actually came to our workshop recently. Hey, Lisa. Rich, you got to meet Lisa in Florida. Um, I did. Not too long ago. Um, but she said it just means you keep building your portfolio. Because someone else mentioned uh, a minute ago, like, hey, well, I guess none of my images would... <laughs> would be on the website right now. Like that's not necessarily what I mean. What I mean is only show the images that you love the most, that you're the most proud of, okay? And those images that I shot 10 years ago or 15 years ago wouldn't pass my test now, but at the time they did, okay? And so what I'm trying to say is you do the best you can at that time. You show your best photos at that time. And Rich and I in a minute are gonna have some recommendations, some strong recommendations about how to build that portfolio of strong questions. What's up, Rich? Now, and I will say this, it sounds like like we can almost name this podcast, Do I Suck? Question <laughs> mark. And I don't want that to be mean, I don't want that to discourage you, but like this is a real lesson that people paper right over. So I'm gonna be mean for two seconds, call me names in the comments, I don't care. Unless I get fired, then I care. <laughs> but it's one of those things, like when I go to a shoot now, like if the conditions aren't right or the bride isn't having a good day or if the weather's crappy, like I'm not like, oh, I love these pictures. I have brides contact me all the time and say like, why isn't my wedding on the blog? Ooh. And I'm like, your pictures suck. Like I don't, you know, <laughs> like they're as good as they could have been for what was happening. But mm -hmm. I wasn't like, oh my gosh, I love these. That's why like my Instagram, my personal business Instagram is, I, I only post like once every six months because I'm so self-critical of those pictures. And you, you, I think you get more like that, the better you get as a photographer. Like, so mm -hmm. as you grow, it's kind of like an art critic. Mm -hmm. If you walk into a uh, art museum in New York, knowing nothing about art, you're kind of like, that's a cool triangle and like it means nothing to you but as you develop the skills to become aware of what's good what's bad what's good composition what's good exposure what's in focus what's out of focus as you gain this knowledge you become a better critic of other people's work but even more of your own work i am my own worst critic nobody hates my photos more than i do <laughs> and that's not a good i mean that's not a great thing but i mean i promise you that like I'll have a client rave that they love my photos and I'm like, well, I'm glad you liked them because I was, they were like a six out of 10 to me in my heart. Right. And I feel like that's one of those things like where photographers will beat themselves up and they'll over edit, they'll over critique and you know, things like that. Like that's a whole separate podcast probably is like being your own worst enemy hmm. with photography. But like, I just wanted to preface that cause I don't want this to get like too negative 
me and David have shoots all the time right now where we're like, ugh, like, like if, woo, I'm glad I got one good picture because, man, that kid was acting awful or, man, the weather turned south. Like, it, it, we're human too and we mess up too and I promise I hate my pictures more than anybody else. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. <clears throat> I hear that. A lot, of, a lot of folks who are on live right now are commenting how they're super critical of their photos and stuff too. Well, here, here's the thing. And so, and it's, so we have people asking the question, like, how often do you change the photos? Like, how do you build the portfolio of photos that you're actually proud of? And so this is where it comes in with the when and why you should shoot for free. Okay. So a couple things, some disclaimers out there. Shooting for free is great when you're trying to help people out. Like, I'm never... So kind of here's kind of a, um, you know basically an extra way that you can shoot for free. You can shoot for free whenever you want when you're trying to be generous <clears throat> to people who need you know, free shoots. If you're trying to bless someone or um, like we do help portrait you know, each year where we you know, shoot, shoot portraits of um, people who can't afford to get portraits taken and print those photos. And that's a really amazing rewarding experience. So you can do charitable work for free as much as you'd like to do. If you're working for a nonprofit and you're going over to Africa you know, or wherever it is to an impoverished nation and you're trying to shoot photos to help um, that nonprofit do the good work that they're doing, that's great. So when we talk about don't shoot for free or only shoot for free in these scenarios, that's one of the ones that's perfectly acceptable as much as you'd feel it in your heart to do that. Okay. So shooting for charity. Until your wife, until great. your wife yells at you. Until your wife yells at you. Yeah, I mean, you have to be reasonable. You can't sh you can't be traveling all the time shooting for free if you're trying to provide for your kids. But to be able to do that and give back is such a, an invigorating and such a um, a life giving thing uh, to you as an artist and as a photographer and as a as a human being to be able to give back. So that's wonderful to be able to shoot for charitable causes or to just do things out of the kindness of your own heart. Should be that be the way that you run all your photo shoots? No. When should you shoot for free is a question that we get a lot. Should you shoot for free is another version of that question. And I think here is the simple answer for that. We're going to talk about some, uh, some, some examples of how to use this strategically. Okay, You shoot for free, number one, when you are strategically trying to build your portfolio. Okay, That's probably arguably the most important and crucial time to shoot for free is when you're trying to build your portfolio. Now that could be when you're starting out or it could be later, okay? When like Lisa, who's an experienced veteran photographer, like maybe she wants to update some things in her portfolio and she is gonna collaborate with a uh, Instagram influencer to shoot some photos of that person. And it's a mutually beneficial thing because this, this beautiful Instagram influencer uh, needs some fresh photos and y'all are gonna collaborate on a shoot and you're gonna get some fresh photos for your portfolio. It's a win-win situation in that scenario. You're not charging the influencer for that. And maybe, um, and you probably do this with vendors, and I know Brandon Chesbro does this with vendors all the time um, that you're working with. You're doing things to essentially rise the, raise the tide you know, because a, a rising tide raises all ships, right? So if you're doing things in a strategic way to build your portfolio and build other people's portfolios, like let's say the model or uh, the florist or the, you know, the baker, event planner, whatever it is, that's a really great reason to shoot for free when you're building people's portfolios, including your own, when there's strategic value in doing that. Okay, that's an example of maybe later on in the process when you're established and you're trying to improve your portfolio. When you're building it initially, that's a great time to shoot for free. But there's some strategic things that you can do to not screw yourself over a long term with getting that reputation of he or she is a free photographer or a cheap photographer, okay? You can do this in a way to let people know that you're building your portfolio and this is a one-time only situation that they should feel so blessed to be a part of, okay? Not, not that you're like, you should be blessed because I'm shooting you, but in a way you can be like, um, you know, if you're building your portfolio, if you're a new photographer and you want to shoot portraits, you want to shoot weddings, you want to shoot weddings or, you know, it's hard to like to shoot a wedding for free. I mean, you might have to second shoot for a while or something and we can ask Rich about how he kind of got started there. But basically, um, if you're trying to shoot family portraits, I'm sure you know someone who has kids 
or, you know, as a family, okay, whether it's a couple or so it's a brand new family or whether it's, you know, an aging family and established, whatever, okay. I'm sure you have friends or family that could fall into the category of someone that you could photograph for free to build your portfolio, okay. Now, here's a caveat to that. <clears throat> my, one of my photography mentors, Michael Gomez, said this to me, and I think I may have mentioned this on the podcast, I'm not sure. He's like, hey, you want to know a secret to being... Uh, a successful photographer or to look like an amazing photographer. He was like, and I know some people get offended by this, so I apologize, but it's all Michael Gomez's fault. He's uh, the amazing um, uh, studio manager at Westlight Studios in Franklin, Tennessee. We shared a photo studio for a long time. Amazing, amazing guy. He said, you want to know the secret to being a successful photographer? He's like, shoot beautiful people. And I was like, huh? I was like, that sounds a little bit vain. And he's like, that sounds mean. Yeah. He's it's like, true. seriously, if you shoot beautiful people and you post pictures of those beautiful people in your portfolio, that was probably what you were talking about a minute ago when you're like, brides were asking, why didn't you post my photos on your blog or your Instagram? And you're like, well, <laughs> um, and the, good, the bad and the ugly. I know people yeah. are going to get like, you know, upset at this, Offended. Right? but no, I don't true. mean it to, I don't mean it to offend anyone, but here's the thing. It's not that you can't shoot beautiful or non-beautiful people, uh, as an occupation, we're saying don't feature the photos. I should say this, only feature photos of beautiful subjects. All and right. and to add to that, when here's the thing, when you're doing a shoot for free, my mind like is like, who is the prettiest girl I can throw in a bride dress? Mm -hmm. And then not only am I picking the person that's right, I'm also picking the time I'm picking the location. So all these variables that I talk about that can make a photo suck. Right. I now have control over as the the content creator, the the creative director of this moment. You're stacking the variables and in your in your favor. In your favor. Yeah. Oh, it, it's huge and it's like if I had to think about like take everything we just said and throw it out the window. Photographers, the the five best photographers where I live. Um if I go to their website those are probably all styled shoots, meaning they're not real weddings. It's a, a model bride and groom decorated by a professional designer, and they hired a llama or like so, like so all these crazy things that could happen. Yeah, like like shoots like – Oh, oh just, like, literally a llama and they're like Like, like a llama, dress. yeah. yeah. Like, oh, so I was like, like wait, you're walking on the llama beach. Llama, tell you more about that. Yeah, so, I'm like, yeah. that's not a real wedding. You know what I mean? That's a styled shoot and the reason those pictures – like if you think that photographer is this great photographer, they probably just stacked the odds in their favor and that's what we're trying to tell you to do. Yeah, Stack maybe the odds, odds ever be in your favor. Sorry. Nice. Um, Hunger yeah. Games? I was shooting an arrow. Yeah, never mind. Um, I was just trying not to mockingbird. Ever. Never mind. Okay. So um, yes. No, that's that, that, that's so true. So basically here's the, here's the deal. Here's kind of like the thing. Um, and I think maybe the way that Michael Gomez had had, had uh, phrased it, he was like, he was like, if you want people to think you're a great photographer or a great portrait photographer, he's like, shoot beautiful people. It'll make you look like a better photographer. He's like, because when you shoot beautiful people, you feel more confident because you're getting good images, like images that you're proud of. So it actually is a way to build your confidence. That's why when we do workshops, I try to only hire you know beautiful models and stuff like that because it actually makes our students feel confident and help them overcome overcome some um, you know maybe some doubts that they have and they feel proud about their images. Um, but also. When you shoot beautiful people and you put those people in your portfolio, you have brides or you know moms or whoever it is that's looking to hire you and be like, I want to look like that. This photographer is amazing. Okay, and it's it's cheating in a little sort of. I mean, it's not cheating at all. I'm just saying it's kind of one of those things where it's stacking the odds in your favor to essentially be like, here's what I can do when all the stars align. Okay, and is every shoot going to look like that? No, but he but if you want to book shoots. You need to show only your best photos in your portfolio, and you need to show if you're if we're talking about portraits, you know, um, only show beautiful people in your portfolio of portraits, you know. And so when we talk about free shoots, like like Rich was just talking about, he's like the best photographers in on the Outer Banks, uh, which arguably Rich Coleman is, you know, is the best to me. Um, they're, they're essentially stacking the odds in their favor. They're hiring beautiful models, beautiful people, 
right? Hiring or whatever, trading with them. And then they're getting it styled by, you know, maybe a stylist or, you know, a boutique shop or whatever it is. And they're getting the florist to participate. And maybe they're getting a petting zoo involved if they're bringing a llama on the beach. I don't know. Um, point is, is they're doing everything they can. They're picking the right day. They're, they're checking the weather. They're picking the right timing. They're picking all these things to stack all the odds in their favors so that they can shoot beautiful people and get the best freaking photos possible so that they can have those photos for their portfolio and be perceived as an amazing photographer. Okay, and so when you go through that effort to do a free shoot and that has strategic value for everyone involved, and everyone involved is gonna get those, those photos for free. The model is gonna get at them for their portfolio. The florist is gonna be able to feature these photos in the, you know, the, you know, the, the poster that's in the window for the florist shop. The event planner is getting to use it as you know, portfolio items for, you know, for their event planning website. The photographer, which is you, of course, is going to get to use it on the front of your website. Then you're going to have an image that, let's say it's a bride, is going to look at it and be like, wow, I want Rich Coleman to shoot my wedding. And I want to have that. Who is the florist in that photo? You know? So when you can strategically do that. So that's kind of an example of like when you're getting a little bit more advanced and you're doing, you're working with different vendors and stuff or whoever it is and you're styling the shoot to strategically get, you know, images that are going to benefit everyone involved. But when you're just starting out and you're trying to build up a portfolio, A, you need to practice, you know, and that's why we have the photo mentorship um, because we have courses on, you know, family portraits and shooting natural light portraits on shooting studio portraits. Uh, and, you know, wildlife and landscapes and all these different things. And, you know, students of the photo mentorship can stream unlimited access to all of our courses. Okay. And then you can practice and post your photos in our amazing Facebook group and Rich and I and Crystal and Brandon and Emily will give you guys feedback on your images and tell you guys what settings you should change and how you should do it better next time. But the point is, is that you do need to practice and you can use the photo mentorship, um, you know, resources and tutorials to help you get there and gain those skills faster. But when you are practicing, if you can practice, I'm going to use family portraits as the example. If you can practice with beautiful people, do that for a couple reasons. Number one, it'll help you build confidence faster because when you're trying to learn how to take beautiful portraits, and you're working with people that are harder to photograph, it's not gonna help build your confidence, okay? And it's not gonna help you improve as fast, okay? Number two, it'll help you build your portfolio, right? Because if you shoot beautiful people and you start gaining that confidence that you can be a good photographer and you're feeling good about the images, that's really important as a photographer to feel good about the images, okay? Yeah, it really is, it's huge. really important. It's, it's huge. Um, and you get images that are portfolio worthy, you know, maybe each photo shoot you do only has one or two images that are portfolio worthy, that's fine. But if you shoot beautiful people and you get uh, portfolio worthy images that you can add to your website, that's a huge win. So this family that you're practicing on got free photos and you're strategically being like, hey, I'm doing this as a portfolio building thing, you know, please don't tell your friends, you literally say that, like, please don't tell your friends that you know, I'm shooting people for free. This is a this is a special. I normal I normally charge a million dollars for this. Don't don't tell my other clients. But you can you can use that opportunity to make them feel special. Actually. Oh yeah, and that's what I've done in the past. Oh, like, yeah. hey, listen, I'm doing this for free for you because I love you guys and blah blah blah. But don't tell anyone else about the deal that I'm giving you. And that same line can work whether you're giving the people a discount or whether you're shooting it for free. You can be like, please don't tell people about this amazing deal that I'm giving for you only. Okay, and then what will happen is they'll feel a sense of pride, like wow, they, he took, he or she took better care of me. I got these amazing images. They're going to be showing off the images, and they'll be like, wow, yeah, David Molnar is an amazing photographer. Check out these images he did for us. You should totally hire him. He's he's pretty expensive, but you know it's totally worth it. Even though they got it for free or a discount, they're going to feel this sense of pride, and they're going to actually feel this sense of reciprocity. And reciprocity is a huge thing. Uh, because if you do something for free for someone or you do something for discounted and they can, you can use it in a strategic way, they'll sing your praises, especially if you do a great job. And if they were a portfolio worthy client or clients, then you can have the added benefit of adding it to your portfolio as well. Okay. So when should you shoot for free, Rich? When should you shoot for free? When you're trying to build your portfolio, when you're trying to show your best work 
and when you're starting out, there's nothing wrong with shooting for free as long as you're not getting taken advantage of, which we talked about. And take – beautiful people are great, but as a photographer, I love it when my hands aren't tied behind my back. When I have somebody say, show up at five, show up here, I'm like, great, these pictures are going to suck. When you have the ability to shoot who you want to, where you want to, how you want to, that's like when you really get to shine as a photographer and really get to yep. show off everything. Yeah. So – and you have you have more you, you can stack the cards more in your favor when you're doing these portfolio building shoots because oh yeah you can do whatever you, know, you want when you're when you're doing a styled shoot sure and when you're doing a free shoot for a family you have a little bit more pool because they're not paying you a thousand dollars for the session you're like hey Aunt Susie um, and her husband Jake and your and the three cute little kids you can be like I need you to be there at six thirty because sunsets at seven thirty and I really want to shoot you know, at this time, maybe get there 10 minutes early so we can scout it out or whatever it is. But you can stack the cards in your favor instead of it being the blazing sun at 5 p.m. when sunset is at 7.30 or, you know, maybe 5 p.m. isn't that bad in that scenario. But if the sunset's at 9 and it's 5 p.m., it's going to be blazing, right? Oh, yeah. Um, Awful. Yeah. Yeah. Awful. So when should you shoot for free? When you're building your portfolio, specifically... Um, when there's strategic value to raise the tide, okay, so that could also be a portfolio building thing. It can kind of be a double whammy there. Oh, there's there's nothing bad. Like if if you're if somebody who gives you recommendations, like let's go back to the florist. If if a florist who refers the mess out of you says, "Hey, will you come shoot this stuff for me?" The answer is heck yes, because you go shoot pictures of bouquets for an hour, and that lady's gonna refer you and refer you only that is totally worth it you know Mm -hmm. and i mean i can't state that enough like when people sell for you just because you were nice to them it was totally worth that free shoot yeah hey i have a question for you well i I was actually i was calling i was calling a florist because i was really interested in you know kind of like what they had available i was asking them about you know like different tiles and different like hardwood styles or something and they were like didn't know anything about hardwoods like who's the idiot now you know what i mean uh that was better than the peter pan i like that florist uh, florist <laughs> <laughs> yes sorry I if you're floored at my jokes okay um so we, we have building the portfolio raising the tide and being generous mm-hmm. i love shooting for free like that's probably my favorite thing. My wife literally will yell at me sometimes like when money's tight. <laughs> she's like, hey, uh, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just going to go shoot them for free. They're so cool. And she's like, okay, we still have a mortgage payment. So just remember that. And I'm like, listen here, woman. And, and like here's the other thing about that. And this is the thing. There was some tension between my wife and I over the years that we've been married for 14 years now. 14 years and two weeks. Um, a little over two weeks. A lot of times your photo sessions are going to be around dinner time or family time, you know? Ooh. So when you sit, this is something I learned from Greg McEwen. I think it was his name who wrote the book, The Essentialist or Essentialism. I forget. Have you ever read that book? So good. It's is not it very essential. Essentialist or Essentialism. I forget. I'm totally, but whatever. <laughs> like I'm, I'm like blanking on it. But it's such a good book. He emphasizes this point in the book. He's like, when you say yes to something you are saying no to a lot of other things, okay? Mm. So just to, just to play devil's advocate for a second, when you say yes to doing a free shoot, you're potentially saying no to your family during that time, okay? Now, I'm not trying to make anyone feel bad, but if you're doing all these shoots for free at dinner time at 7 p.m. when you could be hanging out with your kids and your, your wife or spouse is having to do that instead, right? Um, then that's something that that can have a toll, you know? So it's also oh, yeah. another thing. It, it, yeah, so if you're out of the kindness of your heart helping all these people, um, you know, giving these, them these free family shoots when maybe they could pay another photographer to do it or whatever, that's another thing to weigh in the balance. Is like, I, you know, I used to be way over generous when I started out with my time on photo shoots. And it was wonderful because it built my career. I would strategically give photo shoots to people that could afford it because I saw not only, maybe I just really liked them and I wanted, they were good friends of mine or something like that, but then sometimes I would do it for strategic value of like, hey, if I help this person out and I give them a free shoot and they have a blast, then maybe down the line they'll refer me to their friends or something, 
you know, if they were a well-connected or maybe it was just a portfolio building thing or whatever it was. Or, I mean, I, like there was indie artists that I shot for free. Um, and then when they got signed with a record label, uh, the record label, they would be like, we only want to work with David Molnar. And then the record label would pay me thousands of dollars to do the shoot. But I wouldn't have got that shoot had I not done the free one, you know? So there's all sorts of strategic ways to, you know, to do that. Point being is there was times where there's tension between my wife and I, cause I'd want to do these free shoots cause I saw maybe some strategic value, but I wasn't necessarily sure how it would play out. And then it was when I was saying yes to doing the shoot, I was saying no to family time. You know, so mm. you just want to be careful to balance those things. When you say yes to something, I purpose I purposely no do shoots things. just so I don't have to do bath time. I purposely <laughs> be like, oh, seven o'clock. I hate bath time. <laughs> yeah, me too. Just kidding. My uh, wife doesn't watch this though, so we're fine. We're good. Yeah, <laughs> she hates me. Um, oh, my the, my favorite thing about getting a babysitter is like my wife and I will like try to leave at like five thirty p.m. and like or maybe 6 p.m. and be gone just enough time, like two, three hours, just enough time for like the babysitter to like bathe the kids and like get them in bed. And we'll even text like, are the kids down? Like, no, not yet. Okay, we'll, we'll sit in the driveway for a little bit longer, you know? Cause it's like, you Ooh, know. What are you doing in the driveway, David? What are you doing in the driveway? Uh, <laughs> pr- <laughs> probably probably uh, just making out with my wife in the driveway, you know, for all the neighbors Ooh, to watch. There it is. Um, yeah, but I mean, it's yeah, it's 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 one of those things. So for sure. No, I mean, I say that with, like my wife is saying too, like to, to harp on that point one more time. She texted like, me like, "Hey, right you're now. doing this." No, she is. Uh, like doing that shoot for free is great, but like sometimes you know, like they can't afford it. So like you really don't want to put yourself in the spot to where you're like, "I'm Rich Coleman, the free photographer." I, you know what I mean? Because that's a that's a crappy place to be, especially when you start building up and you're like, "Well, dang, I could have made a grand." But now, because I've shot this family 10 times free, now they just expect it. Now they're abusing that power Mm. of devaluing me. Mm. So you don't want to devalue yourself as free photographer. You want to kind of ride that fine line of like when it works well for you and your business and your portfolio building. And then just when you want to be generous, like there's nothing wrong with that. That's that's tricky too because um, that's a really good point. We're going to wrap this up here in a second too. Once you start shooting someone for free or cheap or give them a deal, it's really hard to change your price for that specific client. You know what I mean? It's hard to like when you've done a shoot or two for free for some friends of yours or whatever it was, they do kind of expect that. Well, it's me. I get that special deal or whatever it is. And I've had some... I've had some clients that are, you know, friends or became friends or whatever it is where I like did a free shoot or eventually did a free, whatever it was. And it, ca- it kind of became one of those things where they came to expect it over the years. And I've probably done like six or seven shoots for them over the years. And it got to the point where it did become kind of a burden. So that is another thing to consider. Um, you know, having good, clear boundaries in the beginning, like, hey, I'm gonna do this shoot for free for you guys this one time for portfolio building thing, if y'all ever wanna do it. I mean, I, I'm not sure if you wanna send it, say that Send up. an invoice at full price and put free this time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this yeah. is normally, so they can see like, holy crap, like, that was worth a grand. Like, I saved a thousand dollars right now. Cause that'll make them like, guess themselves. Like, should I ask for it again? Because that is a very, and like, honestly, like when that person becomes a headache, now it's a headache from work where you're not getting paid. A headache for work where you're getting paid isn't as bad. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I have yeah. headaches all day working for David. But when <laughs> if you know, when I was working for David for free for the first six months, that's when like I'm just <laughs> That's kidding. when it got that's when it got that's when it got pretty annoying. Well, hey, so 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 there's a client there's a client where um I, I ended up doing a bunch of free shoots for them and it was really good and we actually like there's a lot of strategic raising the tide stuff going on. But then it got to the point later on where it's like it had been so many years and I was still doing these free shoots for them every single year. And then the amount of retouching and kind of like extra work that became like the hassle after the fact, I'm like, I'm just so busy. I'm shooting all these bands and like to do this family's family portrait and like retouch this stuff was really tricky. I, 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 it became that thing where I was like, I'm not getting paid for this and I really have all these other paying clients that really need my attention right now. 
but yet I'm good friends with them and we've given each other lots of strategic value and stuff over the years. So it becomes a tricky thing. I know we're talking about an advanced concept and I don't even necessarily have a good answer for that, but I, I kind of had to cut it off a little bit and be like, Hey, I'm so busy. I'm sorry. I just can't do that this year. You know, like if I had to do that, actually, and they kind of asked me the, the following year too. And I was like, same thing. Just so I, I'd love to do it, but like I'm slammed right now. Um, and it's hard to say no. It's especially hard to say no to the people that you love, you know? So be careful with that. Try to set clear boundaries because when you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And it may be something that's more important over here that you're saying no to. So mm. should we give away some Deep. reflectors? Yes, we should. Okay. Sweet. Reflectors. I think we, our team is pulling them up. So we have two, we need two as winners. we speak. Okay. We got it. We got them. Okay. Sweet. Um, all right. I'm ready. I'm ready when I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, so we're giving away the, a five-in-one reflector. Is that what it is? The five-in-one reflector. It's pretty amazing. I have one right over here. <laughs> hey, I wasn't ready for the drum roll. Um, I'm sorry. We're, we're drumming up some attention here. Um, okay, thank you. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Y'all are amazing. Thanks for sharing it. Thanks um, for putting you, up with us for this long. Yeah, that's right. All you had to do to uh, be entered in to win one of these reflectors is to just share this live video. So the very, I'll do the first giveaway and you need the second one. Sound good? We're going to give it away to two people right. today. Okay. You want to do a drum roll now? And the winner is... Do I wait for that? Alicia... Okay, cool. Oh, is that me? I'm sorry. I didn't know <laughs> You do the first saying. one now. Alicia Harold. Congrats, Alicia, Alicia Harold. Harold. Hey, you have one. If you're gonna if you're gonna go out of order, at least you can do is just say the whole name. You know what I mean? <laughs> that girl is on fire. That girl is on fire. On fire. Okay. Um, and the next winner is. Dude, it's such I was a waiting long on you. I did the... We need we need like a shorter <sighs> drum roll, right? Like, cause it's like complain, oh gosh, complain like, about. Apple. All right. Uh, Susan Helmuth, 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 Susan Helmuth, you have won another reflector. So hopefully those can, hopefully you guys, you ladies, Alicia and Susan can use these you reflectors. Skies. You guys can use these reflectors to reflect some light on your subjects as you're shooting beautiful people and building your portfolio. The number one underused photography tool. Reflector. A reflector. Hmm. Oh Where's man. Your, where, where are you pulling this data from? Just in my brain, like shoots, like people, I, I guess people are just, they're annoying unless you have somebody else to hold them with you. They can give you such good light and it's just like you just settle and don't use it and settle for bad light. Like use a reflector, people. If you've never used one, try it out. Has nothing to do with anything we talked about today, but except on that first free shoot, hmm. you should try to reflect on that and use a reflector. Sounds great to me. Sweet. Hey, guess what? What? I love you. Talking about me or the students? <laughs> hey, folks. Uh, thank y'all. So, the, the listeners. <laughs> the listeners. Thank y'all so much for tuning in today. You guys are amazing. If y'all want to check out all of our trainings, you can head over to thephotomentorship.com. Thephotomentorship.com. That's what we call TPM. And you can stream unlimited access to all of our photography courses. We have like a 25 courses and counting. We have many tutorials. We have how I got the shot episodes. And we have Facebook Lives two, three, four times a week sometimes inside of our amazing Facebook group exclusively for TPM students where we do photo critiques, answer all your questions, do live trainings, and just have a freaking amazing time. Give lots time. of stuff away. Lots yeah, we of give stuff given away. Every, every time we go live, uh, whether it's this podcast or whether it's one of our exclusive trainings um, inside the photo mentorship, we always give stuff away like we did today. So. Check out thephotomentorship.com. Go stream .com. unlimited access to all of our courses. We'd love to see you over there. You guys are amazing. Have a fantastic day. I love you. Please subscribe on iTunes or Spotify so you never miss out on news and events. Give us a rating on iTunes or simply tell a friend about us. It helps us get the word out so we can help more people reach their photography goals.